Qualcomm just announced a new AI chip that seems to be the next big thing in the AI market. But should AMD and NVIDIA investors be worried? Also, we did see AMD announce some pretty cool stuff that I think you're going to be excited about. Even the chip that I personally have never heard about in the AI market, and it looks extremely, extremely interesting. We also have some other news impacting the overall AI market. So let's take a closer look in today's episode. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. And check out fool.com slash Jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for the subscription service. Now, let's continue with today's episode. All right, so let's start off here with Qualcomm. Qualcomm was up roughly 11% on the day, sitting at $187. Now, at one point, the stock did hit over 203, and since then, the stock had pulled down about 8%. Now, for those that are not familiar, Qualcomm actually released a new AI chip. So Qualcomm unveils their AI200 and AI250, redefining rack scale data center inference performance for the AI era. So... Qualcomm releases these new chips, which are meant for the inference and are ex for the inference market, and are expected to lead on total cost of ownership. They also mentioned that the A250, the AI250, is going to introduce an innovative memory architecture, offering a generational leap in effective memory bandwidth and efficiency for AI workloads. Now. Qualcomm also mentions that the products are part of a multi-generation data center AI inference roadmap with an annual cadence. So a lot of things to unpack here, but the first thing that we're seeing is everybody's trying to touch the AI market. And if you're trying to touch the AI market, you need to do it on an annual cadence, right? If not, you're going to be left behind. The other thing that I found pretty interesting is that this is actually a rack scale solution, right? That's actually pretty impressive. Now, some things to note is there wasn't really much tech specs on this right now. Um, just a lot of big name, big press release, right? I don't think the deep, the, there's not a lot of detail. Um, first, the AI chip is coming off the company's NPU technology leadership, which is kind of what they use for a lot of their AI solutions in the consumer products. They also are going a different route. Instead of using HBM, they're going to use low power DDR, uh, which is the one of the chips the AI200 supports up to 768 gigs of low power DDR per car for higher memory capacity and lower cost, right? Completely different from the HBM that a lot of these AI chip companies are doing, but it is a lot more memory as well with this move here. So we're going to have to see how that plays out. Now, both rack solutions feature direct cooling for thermal efficiency, PCIe for scale up. So it could be bullish for maybe your Astera Labs, if this actually produces, or maybe your Credo uh, Ethernet for scale out, confidential computing for secure AI workloads, and a rack level power consumption of 160 kilowatts. So this actually is a really, really big system. Now, the products are expected to be released in the, A the AI200 in 2026 and the AI250 in 2027. And from there on, they're going to release an annual cadence moving forward. Now, while we didn't get a lot of updates, we did kind of get an order from Humane, which is a AI infrastructure in Saudi Arabia. And they're going to be targeting roughly 200 megawatts in 2026, of Qualcomm's AI200 and AI250 rack solutions. So that's interesting, right? This is not a small order. That can definitely be a few hundreds of millions of dollars of revenue, depending on how many chips are sold here. But that's a lot of, uh, that's a nice opportunity if it does happen, right? We are seeing Humane and a lot of Saudi Arabia companies make a lot of partnerships with other US chip companies. And we still have to see if chips are really going to be sent out to, 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 to this part of the world. So a few things there. Now, how did we exactly get here? Well, this isn't their first AI chip. So Qualcomm actually has the Cloud AI 100 Ultra. Um, this came out, I believe, in 2020. And we've actually seen it in a few benchmarks of those AI benchmarks and, and, and LLM 
kind of common benchmarks for the AI market. So it's not the first time they're going to be releasing something, but it's the AI 100 wasn't necessarily something adopted by big players. The other way recent that Qualcomm got into this is they recently completed their acquisition of Nubia uh, about four years ago. That's not recent, about four years ago. But they recently finished kind of the lawsuit with ARMS where uh, there was a little bit of fighting of certain IP rights here. Uh, but this is a company that allows them to have a lot of data center solution uh, roadmaps, especially especially in the CPU market, which will be crucial in creating kind of these rack scale solutions. And the final thing is Qualcomm right now is in the process of acquiring a company called Alpha Wave, which is known for like they're served as a lot of networking solutions that help with this data transfer, right? All this interconnection technology. So all these pieces are what allows them to kind of make these rack scale solution. Now, someone, uh, Jeff here on X kind of messaged that s someone said that uh, one of the management from Qualcomm mentions that not only are they going to be able to sell their own racks, they can actually sell AI chips um, the chips individually, right? Companies like NVIDIA might do something similar like they did with Intel, where you kind of use this NVLink solution and NVIDIA can actually buy CPUs from Broadcom. So there's opportunities for them to sell data center parts individually. I'm not too sure though how that's going to play out. Overall, while everything is pretty much a big look on a top level overview, there is some evidence that things can actually go in the right direction. Now, the biggest, the biggest hurdle in my opinion is competition. AMD is a player that has been doing this for a while, right? AMD has been in the data center market for a long time and it took them a while before they got any real traction. The MI300, let's be honest, was okay, but it wasn't a blockbuster move. The MI350 is moving in the right direction. The MI450 um, is most likely going to be where things are going to be super excited. So Qualcomm, I think the market is, in my opinion, is getting pretty excited for something that still needs to show that it will have success. You still have ASIC solutions like Marvell and Broadcom as well. So the competition for someone entering a market is extremely, extremely tough. And then you have NVIDIA as the behemoth, right? That it's not going to want to give up any market share in this space. Now, the next company I want to take a closer look at is AMD. But first, I do want to say if you want to join, uh, check out whatthechiphappened.com. Once you go there, you're going to see a new webpage. You can either enter or subscribe to the free newsletter for quick updates on the AI and chip market. Or if you are serious, serious about the semiconductor and AI investing, make sure to check out a community. We're just opening up live today. Limited time founding members offers get 50% off your annual subscription using code intro. Again, this is only if you're serious about semiconductor and AI investing. Make sure to check out whatthechiphappened.com. Now let's look here at AMD. So AMD was up roughly 2.7% today. When Qualcomm news came out, actually the market was a little bit worried. I'm not too sure why, but few things happened with AMD. And obviously I'm gonna cover this during AMD's weekly a little bit more in depth this upcoming Saturday, uh, but it's, it's, it's only Monday, right? So we still got some time from there. First, AMD completes its divesture of CT Systems, Data Center Infrastructure Manufacturing Business Suit, Samina. Now, for those that are not familiar, AMD bought CT System, a company that develops engineers, but also manufactures rack scale systems. Now, AMD only really needed the engineers for the development process. They didn't want to enter the manufacturing business. So that's what they're selling off here. Now, the great thing is by them selling this, this, this solution, um, Sanmina is becomes a preferred new product introduction manufacturer partner for AMD Cloud Rack and cluster scale AI solutions for further strengthen to AMD's ecosystem. So we know AMD is trying to build massive AI infrastructure. This partner is going to be one of the best players for them. So I like that, right? They're increasing their and improving their supply chain partners. 
Now, a quick reminder, this is a $3 billion in cash and stock uh, for AMD, and it was supposed to end near 2025. We're just starting November, uh, about to start November. So maybe they got it a little bit ahead of time, uh, but overall, a nice amount of cash. If we do, or if we are going to look at AMD, we most likely in in upcoming core in the upcoming months, we will see that they probably have an investment in this company, which is ticker S A N M, because this is how they're getting paid. They're getting paid through cash and through stock, but um, through stock purchasing. So they will have part uh, part ownership in this. The other thing that was pretty interesting is the U.S. announced some major major supercomputers powered by AMD stack that I, I thought this was pretty great and it's definitely bullish in the long term of things there was even a, a new chip announced that I've personally never heard of so we're going to see that AMD is going to be powering two supercomputers for the United States. The first one is going to be Lux AI supercomputer at Oak Ridge National Labs. Uh, and it will be the first dedicated US AI factory for science and will be deployed in early 2026. The second will be the next generation supercomputer called Discovery, which will advance US AI and scientific research at massive scale. Now, one great thing that AMD has, right, is because they're still in the x86. x86 is still super amazing for simulation, for certain type of high performance computing workloads that a lot of these players use that right now may, that's why NVIDIA, for example, needed to partner up with Intel for that x86, because there is a market that still needs true high performance computing, not just purely AI. And that's where AMD is actually pretty, pretty strong in. Now, when fully deployed, the systems will combine, we a combine of $1 billion investment. That doesn't mean AMD is going to get 1 billion of dollars, but it's still a good portion of money coming from here. Now, the Lux AI supercomputer, which is to be deployed in early 2026, is going to be based off AMD's 355 of AMD's Epic CPUs, of AMD's Pensando solution. So it's going to be a nice massive order for them. Uh, overall, very, very full rack system and it's going to be helped built by oracle by hp now the second system is going to be the discovery and that's going to be using amd's epic venice cpu amd instinct mi 430x which is a new mi 400 series accelerator engineered specifically for sovereign ai and scientific computing and that's the thing like i mentioned amd because they have this true chiplet design that they've been working for such a long time they're able to create a lot of different variants they're able to pretty much make just a full ai chip that's what most likely the mi450 will be and they can make a chip that would be a hybrid of ai and scientific computing and that's where this mi430 will be so that's pretty interesting but this is not happening and arriving until 2028 but regardless i do believe these are two wins um, that can definitely help AMD grow into some interesting levels and continues to give that bullish thesis towards investor. Now, if you are in interested in what's going to happen tomorrow in the semiconductor space, the one I'm super, super interested about is going to be SK Hynix. SK Hynix is reporting their quarter three earnings. And as we know, SK Hynix is super, super important for the AI market as HBM is crucial for AI chips. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Make sure to check out what the chip happened dot com and make sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe button. Peace out and see you next time.